everyone, I'm Hajim Park, who is in charge of NIPAS ICT Expert course. So today we're going to talk about AI and also fourth industrial revolution with a professor, Yongjin Kim. So hello, Yongjin Kim. Hello, this is Yongjin Kim <laughs> yes. at uh, Sogang Business School, I mean Sogang University. Uh, I'm teaching service innovation, innovation, and digital transformation. Good to see you. Good to see you too. Okay, so this is going to be the first question for you. We currently live in fast changing world, marked by the fundamental changes um, that can be witnessed in practically every sector and also industry. So, in such a fast changing world, what should companies keep in mind to keep their pace and eventually grow their business, you think? Okay, as you mentioned, the world we live in is defined as VUCA world. They are volatility, uncertainty, complexity, and ambiguity. We actually do not know what is happening and why. We also don't know what will be happening in the near future. Even further, we don't know exactly what causes what. In this world, the most important thing to companies is back to basics. What I mean by this is that companies have to deeply think how they survive and grow. There is only one law in this world which explains the survival and growth of companies. The law of growth is that the value customers perceive should be greater than the price they pay for the product or service they purchase. Otherwise, companies cannot grow. The law of survival is that the price companies get from their customers should be greater than the cost that takes to make the product or a service. Otherwise, companies cannot survive. I call this law VPC law. Mm, see, so for companies to grow, so you mean the perceived value, it should be greater than the price, right? So then what is gonna be the best way for our traditional companies to uh, maximize the value, you think? Okay, the best way to maximize the value is to provide personalized solutions to each individual customer, whether it is individual or firm. But in the traditional economy, if you want to provide personalized solution, the cost of making it increases exponentially. It was and is impossible. So companies chose mass production so that they can reduce average cost of making product or services. When there is a new demand, they deal with this request by making a new business portfolio. The previous one is called cash cow, and which makes money. The latter one, star, which is a growing business. See, so you just described that how value maximization is going to be managed in traditional industries, right? So, how is the process different for companies or industries that have achieved already? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, the world is indeed being transformed to digital. And there are lots of different names to explain it the fourth industrial revolution, digital transformation knowledge economy or service economy. Whatever it is, the very nature of the law of survival and growth remains the same. To grow, the value customers perceive should be greater than the price they pay for the product or service. Otherwise, companies cannot grow. To survive, the price companies get from their customers should be greater than the cost that takes to make the product or service. Otherwise, companies cannot survive. The key difference of the digital transformation from the traditional economy is that now we have the way in that while maximizing the value, I mean, you know, providing personalized solutions to each individual customers, we cannot control, we can control the cost at a relevant level. So, companies choose firstly mass customization and then move to personalization. They do not have business portfolio anymore in the digital economy. The only thing they have is each customer. Each individual customer will be the market in the future. 
Okay, so if we don't think the point of the market anymore, just but individuals or personalization, mm -hmm. then what does that mean for a company's competitive advantage? Okay, what is the key word that represents the competitive advantage of companies in the traditional economy? Market share. Oh, market share. It does not have people in it though. It only counts the number of products or services sold. In the, in the digital uh, transformation world, the key word changes to customer share. It refers to how much of the money a customer spend is given to a specific company. For example, a customer spend $1,000 a year and a company gets 500 out of it. Then the customer share of the company is 50%. If the customer uh, company gets 50% of customer share, it should have a very, very strong competitive advantage. See. So now that we understand right now that cost and price and also the value, mm -hmm. they are in the related together. Right. So can you just explain um, what is the mean of the value cost dilemma? Mm -hmm. um, this is the picture through which I explain the value cost dilemma. In the, in the traditional world, uh, if you want to maximize the value, I mean, to provide personalized solutions, the cost increases exponentially. So you cannot do it. This is what is called value cost dilemma. But in the digital transformation world, even though you try to maximize the value, you can control the cost at a moderate level, as you can see in the right side of the picture. Thank you for your explaining. So it's obviously clear for everyone that digital transformation is going to be the best answer for companies to resolve the value cost dilemma. So um, can you just explain more specifically about the digital transformation, how digital transformation allows the business to grow by value maximization through the personalization without increasing costs? Okay, um, if we go a little bit deeper, we may have two answers to the question. One is the long tail theory, uh, which explains that if we go digital, we can reach the global market where we have over 7 billion people, out of which but 4 billion people have the internet access. So even though you personalize your solutions, you may have enough mass for it. Long tail theory explains 20% of product you sell account for 80% of revenue. Therefore, in the physical world, you need to focus on the 20% of main source of revenue. However, when it comes to this stuff, you can reach a lot more people who want very unique product or services, which give you more revenue than the 20% of core product or service. The second answer will be zero marginal cost. As you can see in the picture above, uh, zero marginal cost means that the cost to make additional units of product or service is close to zero. Think about Microsoft Windows. How much of additional cost will be required to make another copy of it? 30 cents, 40 cents, uh, the additional cost is minimal. Likewise, in the digital economy, while the initial investment will be quite high compared to the traditional economy, the marginal cost to make another copy of it is very small, which contributes to the exponential increase in profit. So this is going to be the final question for you today. So could you give us a real example of a company who has successfully achieved the digital transformation mm -hmm. and also follows the customer share strategy? All right. Um, one of the most relevant examples for a company which pursues customer share um, is Grab. It is a Singaporean multinational ride-hailing company headquartered in Queenstown, Singapore. 
It has about 70% of market share in the mobility service in Indonesia. It provides financial services, food delivery services, logistics services, and content service. It has recently 4.5 billion funding through Series H. With this money, it will provide video on-demand service, digital healthcare service, an insurance service, and hotel reservation service. So, if you, as a customer, stay with Grab, you'll be okay to do anything throughout your lifetime. Thank you for listening to my lecture. Oh, thank you for explaining today. Thank you.